Do we start now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The yes, second uh, session is uh, the topic is on quality assurance, quality ranking, etc. Okay. Uh, just uh, I discuss about the quality assurance in higher education. Uh, this includes quality ranking also. Uh, who has to assure the quality to the stakeholders? This is the question. Whether the education provider should assure the quality or third party can assure the quality of higher education to the stakeholders. There are many facets of uh, quality assurance in higher education. One is quality audit, second is quality surveys, quality certification, IS-19000, quality accreditation, this is NAC accreditation, quality ranking, NIRF ranking. These are the many forms of assuring the quality of higher education to the stakeholders. The first one is the quality audit. This is like a financial audit. Uh, we know we are familiar with the audit, AG audit and state government audit in, in case of uh, government institutions. In case of private institutions, we the central accountant will audit the accounts like that, education institutions uh, should be audited by academic experts. What do they do? Uh, they compare the actual performance with the predetermined specification to know the conformance or the non-conformance. This is uh, to examine uh, the independent examination, not biased, very systematic evaluation is done by auditors to ensure the quality of higher education. Uh, there are two types of quality audit in higher education institutions. One is internal quality quality audit. Second one is external quality audit. Uh, internal quality quality audit means IQAC. Uh, this is insurance, internal quality assurance uh, committee or cell is there in every colleges, universities. They, they will conduct internal quality audit. Second one is external audit. audit uh, it is done by AEEE means uh, academic and administrative audit committee appointed by the college or the universities, they conduct uh, the audit of the higher education institutions performance for the academic year. Uh, faculty members are acting as a quality auditors or assessors or professional quality auditors are certified by the Quality Council of India. So there is a body in India called QCFI. Uh, you can be certified by the QCFI as a professional quality auditor. For that, you have to complete some uh, required course under the QCFI. Uh, this is, you are all familiar with the IQAC, Internal Quality Assurance Cell, uh, which is uh, established as per the requirements of the NAC. Uh, this functioning, each teacher, a teacher of an institution will be headed by this uh, cell and they will, they will have some functioning. You are all familiar with the IQAC. This is a website, if you go there, uh, they will give it, will give you the guidelines of how the IQAC should function. Uh, we have AQR, Annual Quality Assurance Report. Uh, it's yearly report, which should be submitted to NAC every year by all institutions accredited for NAC. Uh, how to submit the AQR? I think uh, your college or your institution will submit and they go for uh, NAC accreditations. Uh, separate AQRs are there for autonomous colleges, affiliated colleges, and also constant colleges and apart for PG programs and UG programs universities. Uh, AAAA, this is uh, administrative and academic audit. This is an independent examination of uh, academic achievements of an institution by a committee. Normally, it is headed by former vice chancellors uh, because they have the expertise or experience in running the universities. They head and some two or three experts will be there. They will uh, make, they will ask the college uh, faculty to make presentation and they evaluate and they give the report for how to strengthen the quality of the college or the education institution. What do they do here? Uh, they go for, uh, they give some recommendations to the college. What's the recommendations usually? There are so many deficiencies in the colleges to improve the quality. Number one is shortage of quality, quality faculty. Uh, there is a infrastructure facilities is insufficient, funds may be insufficient, students ratio may be higher. So they give, they verify the facts, they discover the causes and they give some recommendations. Uh, these recommendations should be implemented by the college before, before going to NAC accreditation. This is the AAAA committee. Uh, we have quality surveys. Uh, 
quality surveys means uh, quality auditors are done in the micro level with the college level or the university level but quality surveys are done at the national level these surveys are conducted by government of india to know the the position of the higher education system in the country so government of india has established one important this is a i s h e all india survey on higher education aish you go if you go to the ministry of education website every year they conduct the survey all india survey on higher education a recent survey report is released by the government of india this is for 2021 uh, we are in the 23rd academic year 21 22 is completed already data has been submitted by the colleges and universities but it has not been report has not been uh, released by the government this uh, all india survey for higher education was started from 2010 11 now uh, almost 13 uh, years have been uh, completed uh, this is a survey of all institutions in the country importing higher education means colleges and universities uh, there are several, several parameters they collect the data they collect the data on teachers student enrollment programs ug programs and pg programs examination result education finance infrastructure, institution density, how many colleges are there, how many students are there in a college, grass enrollment ratio, student-teacher ratio, per student expenditure. These are the parameters they collect from the institutions or the colleges. Uh, latest report is 2020-21 report. Uh, the report you can download from the AISHE Gov in AISH website. Uh, in this website, how the survey is conducted? Uh, this uh, Ministry of Education will ask the colleges and universities to register for survey. Those who register, they can voluntarily submit the data. This is not mandatory. It's not compulsory. It is the voluntary wish of the college or the universities to join to the survey and give the data. The, therefore, the accuracy of the data depends on how the colleges are giving data to the uh, survey. Uh, some of the key results, this is a 2020-21 result. Uh, suppose you, there may be a question, how many universities are there in India? Uh, as per 2021 uh, AISH report, there are 1,113 universities, 43,786 colleges, 11,296 standalone institutions listed on AISH web portal. These are the registered in the AISH web, web portal. After 1,113 universities, 1,900 universities, 41,600 colleges, 10,307 standalone institutions have responded during the survey. Look at the difference here. Registered universities are 1,113. Responded is only 1,099. Some of the universities registered, they have not responded. 43,786 colleges registered for survey. Only 41,600 colleges have answered to the uh, questionnaire given by the AISH. Of the 1,113 universities, 657 government universities are there, most central government uh, universities are state universities, 456 are uh, private universities. If you see the trend in India, private universities are going up. In the next year, if you look into this figure, uh, government universities are private universities. If you see the figures, private universities are increasing every year. Out of 657 government universities in India, 235 are central universities, 422 are state universities. Uh, look at the number here. Uh, central government is spending more money for higher education through central universities, IITs, IIMs, and central universities. There are 235 universities. Uh, only 420 universities are there in the state, combining all state governments. Out of 456 private universities, 10 are private aided, 446 are private unaided. Most of the private universities are unaided. Only 10 universities are uh, aided. They were established earlier. 17 women universities in India, 40 state universities out of them, three are private universities. Uh, if you compare the figure 14, 15, it was only 11 universities who were there. In Karnataka, we have one university, one women university like this. So we have throughout India, 17 universities are there, women universities. There are 16 open universities are there, one central university that is IGNO, and 40 state universities and one private university. One uh, 40 private state universities means Karnataka, we have Karnataka State Open University. 
these are the profile of universities in uh, India for 2020-21. Uh, of the 1,900 universities who responded to the survey, uh, they include 650 general universities, 188 technical universities, 63 agriculture universities, 71 medical universities, 26 law universities, 19 Sanskrit universities, 8 language universities. If you look at this figure, a university means a university means it should it should include all faculties. But in India, we are establishing separate universities for medical, technical, law. Uh, this is not a good sign because if you see the universities in Western countries, university means it consists of all faculties and disciplines. But in India, we are establishing uh, faculty-wise universities, subject-wise universities. This trend has been increasing. Language universities, Kannada University, Sanskrit University, Music University, Law University, like this. There are 121 universities uh, which belong to other categories. These are the categories. Out of 1,099 universities, most of them belong to the general universities. Uh, rest belong to specific discipline specific universities. There were 43,786 colleges in 2021 throughout India. Number of colleges per lakh eligible population, which this is 80 to 23, is 31. This is the density of the colleges, 31. Uh, eligible population, we have one college. It was 27 in 2014-15. Means the number of colleges have been increasing from 14-15 to 2020-21. Of the 43,076 colleges in 2020-21, 21.4% are government colleges, 13% are private aided, 65% are private unaided. You see the composition. 35% uh, are supported by the government, 65% are unaided, means more and more colleges are unaided and less and less colleges are aided, means private aided and government colleges. About 43% of the universities and 61.4% of the colleges are in rural area. This is because most of the universities are established in rural areas, therefore most of them are in rural areas because of the availability of the land in the cities. 10.5% of the colleges means 4,375 are exclusively for female, while only 0.2% are exclusively for male. Means we see many colleges are co-education, means both girls and boys will learn. Only 10% of the colleges are <coughs> exclusively meant for women colleges. Men colleges are only 72 colleges throughout India. Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Rajasthan, Tamil Nadu, Madhya Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh, Gujarat, Telangana. Kerala are top 10 states in terms of number of colleges. More number of colleges we find in these top 10, Uttar Pradesh and Maharashtra. Karnataka follows the third in the category, number of colleges. Among the districts, maximum number of colleges we found in Bangalore urban district, 1,058 colleges. Therefore, what we have done in Karnataka, we divided the Bangalore University into three universities, bifurcated. In spite of bifurcation, number of colleges in the Bangalore urban district is more, followed by Jaro, Jaipur district, which has got 671 colleges. In Karnataka, we have established the seven new universities. Therefore, the number of colleges for the new universities and bifurcated universities have been reduced. But we see the last uh, more density in the uh, Bangalore urban district. About 38% of the colleges are situated in 50 districts. Means, Density of the colleges are more in some districts and there are some backward districts in India where we don't find many colleges. Total enrollment in higher education has increased to nearly 4.13 crore in 2021 from 3.85 crore. Suppose you look at the population of India, there are so many people who are in the age group of 18 to 23, they have not enrolled for higher education. The number of students who have joined for higher education was only 4.13 crores in 2021. There's an improvement from compared to the previous year. The increase in enrollment in 2021 over to 1920% is 7.4%, which was 3% during 1920 and 2.7% during 1819. Means you see the growth rate, uh, there's an increase in the enrollment of students in higher education. Uh, growth rate is 7.4% uh, in 2021 that is 4.13 crore. Overall increase in the enrollment since 1415 is 20.9%. This is one of the main objective of the government of India to increase the enrollment ratio, means more and more students should join to the higher education institutions. This is the goal, the goal of the government. A total of 2.2 crore, around 51.3% are male, 
2.01 crore, 48.7 percent female. Means the number of male students are more than the female students. Suppose if you see in Karnataka, we see more number of girls in a classroom in a college. But if you take the all India figure, boys are more than girls in enrollment. Of the 4.13 crore students enrolled in 2021, 14.2 percent belong to scheduled caste. 5.8% belong to scheduled tribes, 35% belong to OBC, and remaining 40%, 44% belong to other categories. This category is also data available in the survey report. The top six states in terms of student enrollment are Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Madhya Pradesh, Karnataka, Rajasthan. Means a more number of students have joined to higher education. Population of Uttar Pradesh is more compared to other states where we find the enrollment rate is very high. They constitute 53% of the total student enrollment. These uh, six states contribute more in terms of student enrollment in the all India level. In the year 2021, gross enrollment ratio GR in higher education for age group of 18 23 years is 27.3 as compared to 25.6 in 19 means there is an increase in the GR in 2021 compared to 25 26. Uh, if you take the latest data, 21, 22, uh, we get uh, the higher rate, but the report is not available now. The GR in 2021 or 1920 has increased to the by 1.7% as per 2011 projection. 2011 means uh, census data, latest census data is available 20, 2011. We projected that uh, the grass enrollment ratio should be increased. Okay. As per that projection, we see increase in the GR ratio of higher education. In 2021, GR for male is 26.7 and GR for female is 27.9. Means more number of girls are joining to the higher education. It shows the gross enrollment for girls is higher than the boys. Government universities constituting 59% of the total universities, contributing 73% of the total enrollment. This is a very important thing. More and more admission is taking place in the government universities, government colleges. Means 59% of the government state universities are enrolling 73% of the students. Deemed universities, government aided, constituting 0.9% of the total universities, they account for only 6% or 0.6% of the enrollment. Whereas 40% of the private universities account for 26% of the total enrollment. Means private universities, the number of students enrolled for private universities is less. This is maybe because of the cost of higher education in private universities. Fees may be very high. All students may not get the seat in private universities. Now, the more and more students are joining the government colleges and government universities. This is the trend what we get in Indian uh, higher education survey. Government colleges can't contribute 34.5% of the total enrollment. Private aided colleges account for 21%. Whereas private unaided colleges account for 44 percent. In unaided colleges, fees are higher than the aided colleges and government colleges. Uh, therefore, the students uh, are joining to the government colleges. We have seen the definition of quality in the morning session. Quality means value. Value means worth. What is the fees they are paying? What is the education they are getting? Students and parents, they try to admit their students in the government colleges where the fees is very less or they may go to private aided colleges. Uh, fees is comparatively less than the government college, but in the private aided colleges, fees is high because government support is not there. The average enrollment of the government colleges is, is 1097, which is higher than the that of the private colleges, 1057, as well as private aided colleges, 465. This is the number of students per college. Uh, some colleges are uh, 5,000 students are there, 4,000 students are there. Some are rural colleges, student strength is very less. In government rural colleges, maybe 100 or 200. In a city college like Mysore Maranese College, we see 5,000 students. On an average, in government colleges, we see 1,097 students. In private aided colleges, 1,057. Whereas in private attended colleges, average is only 465. About 78% of the students are enrolled in undergraduate level courses, remaining 11% enrolled for postgraduate level courses. Means most of the students who complete their undergraduate, they are not joining to the postgraduate courses. Based on actual response to the undergraduate level, you see the arts is the highest number of student enrollment, 33%, followed by science, followed by commerce. This is all India trend. Suppose if you look at the Karnataka figure, more students may be seen in the commerce. 
But because of the BCA course, which is very popular among the graduation degree colleges, more and more students are joining BCA. Those would have joined science or commerce. Okay, like this, engineering stream only eleven percent of the students are joining engineering. Engineering. So more students are joining art stream, followed by science stream, followed by commerce stream. This is the distribution of the student enrollment in different uh, disciplines. At post-graduation level, maximum students enrolled in social science stream, economic, sociology, political science, 30%. Science, 15%. This is at the post-graduation level. At PhD level, enrollment is highest in engineering and technology, 27%, followed by science, 23.4%. Though engineering graduates will go for job after completion of their degree, they are doing, they are pursuing PhD. Uh, total number of PhD is produced by the engineering college is higher followed by science uh, departments compared to the arts and commerce departments. This is the facts we got it from 2020-21 survey. Uttar Pradesh has the highest student enrollment, 16%, followed by Maharashtra, 10%, Tamil Nadu, 8%. This is the student's enrollment in the age group of 18 to 23. Total number of foreign students in India is 48,000. This is a very minimal number if you compare to other countries. Foreign students have come from 163 countries most of them are African countries, uh, West Asian countries. They are not coming from developed countries like USA, UK, Australia, like this. Most of them are from African countries. These 48,035 students have come from Nepal. Highest number of students are coming from Nepal, 28%. Afghanistan, 8%. Bangladesh, 6%. Bhutan, 4%. Sudan, 3%. United States, 5%. You see the number 5% only. Uh, oh, the main objective of Indian uh, new education policy is to see that the foreign students should come to India and they learn. So they, therefore, uh, our revenue will also be generated. And we can also see the diversity in the students when the foreign students come and learn here. Of the 48,000 uh, foreign students who come to India, Top 10 countries constitute 67% of the total foreign students. Most of them are from neighboring countries, SAR countries, Nepal, Bangladesh, this Afghanistan, etc. The total number of teachers in higher education is 15,51,000, of which about 57% are male, 42% are female. Uh, this is the data given by colleges to the uh, AISH, uh, means for survey, 15 lakh teachers are there. If you take the ratio, number of teachers has increased 47,914 compared to previous year. There are 75% female teachers per 100 male teachers. Regular mode teacher ratio, PTR, people teacher ratio in universities is 24. This is the student teacher ratio. Uh, we will see the later in Oxford University, Harvard University. Teachers. But in India, the teacher student ratio is 24 in a regular board. The number of non teaching staff is 38.95 lakh, uh, which uh, includes 65% male and 34% uh, female. The average number of female per 100 male non teaching staff is 52. This is about number of non teaching staff. So, what we observe is the teacher student ratio in India is 24 in 2021. The total number of pass out. How many students have passed out from the colleges? 95%, 95.4 lakh in 2021, as against 94 lakh in 1920. This is the population of the students in our higher education, around 95 lakh. Means uh, we have seen the enrollment earlier, the admission, and see the result. At the undergraduate level, the highest turnout is Bachelor of Arts, highest 20.5 lakh, Bachelor of Science, 30, 11 lakh. Bachelor of Commerce, 10 lakh. This is the output of the students in different streams. 8.3 lakh students will come from the engineering colleges. Postgraduate level, MA, 5.4 lakh students will come. Master of Science, 2.9 lakh. Master of Business Administration, MBA, 2.2 lakhs. Followed by Commerce, 1.6 lakh. This is the output of the postgraduate students from Indian universities and colleges. Uh, regarding PhD, 25,550 students were awarded PhD during 20, with 14,422 male and 11,128 female. This is the PhD awarded in that year. 
highest number of phds was awarded in science followed by engineering and technology this is the figure we got it because the duration they take to complete the phd in science team is more than two after two years they may submit the thesis because this is based on the uh, experiments if they get the result they will submit and they get the degree but in case of arts and commerce they go for some surveys usually they get three years four years or five years okay uh, this report is available in the uh, this is a website if you go to the website the report is available uh, your college can be registered for submission of the data for the next survey you please visit this website and uh, download the report this is one of the important uh, figures which are available to the higher education. What is the status of higher education in India? How many colleges are there? How many students are there? This uh, survey report has been available from 2010-11 and government of India is doing this survey. This is a voluntary, it is not a mandatory. Data is based on the data submitted by the colleges and universities to the All India Survey of Higher Education. Second important thing is uh, ranking of universities and colleges. How to rank the universities? The Ministry of Education has come out with a ranking framework in 2015. Oh, no. NIRF ranking outlines the national institutional framework, NIRF, uh, last in 2015 by Ministry of Education. This, this uh, methodology outlines the methodology to rank institutions, how to rank the institutions. Uh, this is very difficult to find the parameters. Uh, we see so many ranking uh, parameters. Uh, this includes these five parameters, uh, NRF parameters. First one is uh, yes. first, first parameter. Second parameter is research and professional practice. Third one is graduation outcome. Fourth one is outreach and inclusivity. Fifth one is perception. NAC parameters are different. Uh, NRF ranking parameters are different. Therefore, if you submit the data for NAC, you have to submit it in a different way. When you submit the data for NRF ranking, it is different. These are the five parameters. Uh, these five parameters is assessed for 100 bars. Weightage is 30% uh, for teaching and learning. This 30% includes uh, student strength 20%, faculty student ratio 25%, faculty with PhD 20%, financial resources and utilization 20%. Uh, Online education, 15%. I think uh, morning session we discussed. Uh, if you offer any courses through online, you get bars in uh, NRF ranking. This is uh, first one, teaching and learning resources. This is the matrices they call. This is 0.3% or 30%. Second the criteria is research and uh, professional practice. Uh, it includes publications, 35% weightage. Citation is 35%. Citation means uh, you publish a research article, how many of how many researchers have referred to your uh, research? Uh, this is citation. And H index is there, I10 index is there. Uh, this is a measurement. Usually they do it in size. Uh, uh, patents registered, patents commercialized. How many patents you have registered in your name? How many of these patents have become commercial applications? Uh, 15 bars. Research projects from the funding agencies, maybe ICSR or DST, UGC project, or from foreign uh, agencies like Ford Foundation, etc. This is a research project. Uh, this gives very good marks for NRF ranking. Usually, if you see the ranking, uh, uh, Institute of Science or IITs are getting more score under the research and professional practice because they publish more, the citation is very high. Patent registration is very high and the funding of research project is also very high. This is graduation outcome. The students who have graduated from the higher education institutions, what is the, what they are doing? Number one is placement and higher education studies, 40%. University examinations, 15%. BDS salary, 25%. PhD students, 20%. So if they get job, what's the salary they're getting? If they get more salary, BDS salary, they get more marks for the NRF ranking. And university examination 15% and PhD students. How many PhD students are there? 20%. Outreach and inclusivity, this is 10%. This is about regional diversity, women diversity, socio economic socio challenged students, physically challenged students, means diversity of the students, uh, foreign students, domestic students, and women students, girl students, and uh, socio economic means the SCS students. This is the composition. For this, you get a bars. Perception, this is very important. Perception, your brand image of the institution, employers, academic peers, 
stakeholders will give a marks for this. Uh, the RRF ranking will have a separate questionnaire to get uh, the scoring from the stakeholders. For this 10 bars is there. Totally for 100 bars, they assess at the rank every year. Every year this ranking is released. Uh, this is the latest ranking, 2023 overall ranking released by the Ministry of Education in uh, June 2023. 2024 ranking is going on. As per this, uh, one category is overall ranking. All universities and institutions are ranked here. IIT Madras comes first place this year, 86.69. IIC Bangalore second rank, 83.09. You see the margin is very less, difference is very less. IIT Delhi third rank, 82.16 out of 100 bars. IIT Bombay 81.28, IIT Kanpur 77.23. When you see top 10 ranks, if you look into the previous ranks also, only these institutions are getting uh, 10 ranks. There may be change in the rank each year. IIT Madras make up to second place, IIC Bangalore make up to first place. Means, uh, when we say that these are the top 10 best institutions in India as per the NRF ranking, IIT Madras is number one, followed by IIC. Bangalore. This is the overall ranking. In Karnataka, in Karnataka state, if you rank the institutions, overall ranking, IAC Bangalore, second rank, 83%, followed by Mahe, Manipal Academy of Higher Education, 16th rank in the overall ranking. This is the second place in Karnataka. NIT Suratkal is in the 30th place. This is the second place. JSS Academy of Higher Education, Mysore, 55th place. University of Mysore, 70th place. So we had a good rank in the previous year, but now our rank has been uh, raised to 71. And VTU, Visual Technological University, Bilgaum, 92, and Christ University, 100. Uh, last year, Christ University was not there in the 100th place. Uh, this year, it has come to 100th place. These are the best institutions in Karnataka as per the 2023 world ranking. We see the score. IAC Bangalore is 83 percent. The last rank is 100 with 45.3 uh, percent. Christ University. Uh, university ranking. What we have seen in the previous study is uh, overall uh, ranking. This is university. Suppose you take the universities as a whole in the country. What is the ranking? IAC Bangalore stops number one, 83.16 because IAC is a deemed university which offers uh, degrees, not IITs. Therefore, JNU number two, second place, 68 percent. Jamia Millia Islamia, second, third place. Javadpur University, Calcutta, this is in the 66%. BHU Varanasi, Mahe, Abdut Vishwa Vidyanilya. See the ranking of 10 universities, best universities, uh, 1 to 10. Uh, score varies from 83% to 62.09%. We find in Karnataka only Manipal Academy of Higher Education from Karnataka. Uh, this is college ranking, which is the best college in India to study undergraduate or postgraduate course. I, we would say that Delhi is the best place where you find good colleges. When you see the Birindak House, but Delhi first rank, Hindu College first, second rank, Presidency College Chennai, PSGR, Krishnamal College, this is Koyamathur fourth place, St. Javier's College Kolkata, Atmaram Sadha Dharma College New Delhi, Loyola College Chennai, we don't find any college in the top 10 in Karnataka state. Most of the colleges are in Delhi. This is a very good point because in Delhi, primary education, secondary education, and higher education, uh, high quality we get it. Uh, Sriram College of Commerce, for example, uh, the best college to learn co commerce degrees. Uh, you see the 10 ranks, one, two, three, Four, five colleges from the Delhi, few from Chennai, and a few from uh, Kolkata. These are the top colleges. Uh, research institutions is another category, which is the best research institute in India. IIC Bangalore is the top one research institution with 86.62, followed by IITs. You see a lot of IITs from uh, 1 to 10, which includes uh, AIMS Delhi for medical research. A TFR Mumbai, this is a Tata Institute of Fundamental Research. This is the 10th place. These are the best research institutions in India, top 10 research institutions. Which is the best place to get MBA degree? This is management institutions. You see a lot of IAMs. IAM Ahmedabad is the plus number one, Bangalore 2, Koji Code 3, Calcutta 4. Uh, we have some other institutions here. NIIE, National Institute of Engineering, this is Mumbai, and XLRI, this is uh, Jamshedpur, this is the right place. These are the top 10 
MBA students. So when we see this uh, NRF ranking every year it is released. Uh, therefore, the students or the stakeholders, uh, parents and uh, employers will know which is the best institution in India which offers a higher education, it may be university or IITs or colleges. And we go to the next ranking. This is NAC accreditation. Uh, this NAC accreditation is given to the colleges and universities. Uh, this is, uh, there's a separate body established under UGC, NAC, which is headquarters in Bangalore. Any college or any university can submit itself for accreditation. Uh, this is not mandatory, but if you want to get grant from the UGC or funding agencies, NAC accreditation is required. Therefore, most of the colleges are going for uh, NAC accreditation. Uh, if you see seven criteria are there in uh, NAC accreditation, we have seen only five criteria in NRF ranking. First one is curriculum aspects, university separate uh, points, autonomous college separate, affiliated college separate. For curriculum aspects, freedom is given to university and autonomous college, therefore 150, 150 is like points. For colleges, separate colleges, there is no freedom, therefore 100 is given. Teaching, learning and evaluation, 200, 300, 350. For colleges, it is more. Research, innovation, and extension universities are more. For degree colleges, it is 120. Infrastructure and learning resources, 100 same. Student support provision, 100. For the last one is under 30. Governance, leadership, and management, 100. Institutional values and best practices, 100. So if we would assess the college or the university for these seven criteria under NAC. Uh, under each criteria, a few key indicators are identified. These indicators are further transferred into matrices which actually elicit responses from higher education institutions. Uh, when you are an IQAC coordinator or when your college goes to the NAC accreditation, you would submit the uh, AQR with supporting evidence. NAC grading A, B, C, D, very good, good, satisfactory and uh, satisfactory. The grade, it is, which is based on the CGPA. Uh, CGPA is uh, 3.51, 3.26, this is a grade. Uh, there are few institutions which are accredited A double plus, uh, A plus, A, B plus like this. Uh, this is accreditation. There are different cycles of NAC accreditation. Cycle one, when institution undergoes for the first time, we call it cycle one. After that, you go for five years once, you go for cycle two, three, four. There are old colleges which have completed four cycles or four cycles. And a few colleges have gone for the first cycle because it's uh, you yourself who submit for NAC accreditation voluntarily to get this one. Assessment board, peer team support, uh, section one, two, three, four is there. This is, uh, you see the NAC uh, website. Uh, and most, most of the data you are submitting is 70% uh, of the assessment is done based on your documentation. And 30% is from the visit, peer team visit. Uh, for that, you have a two matrices, qualitative and uh, quantitative matrices, uh, QNM, uh, the quality indicator framework. You submit the data with some uh, uh, evidences. Evidences means, suppose you say that a conference has been uh, held in your college. You submit a photo with a, with a G GPS. With the, they will track whether this has been done in your college or not. Okay. So they produce a uh, grade sheet and they give the grade, NAC grade. Right. Uh, next one is very important. Uh, uh, this is a Quality Council of India. This is an institution. It is not a government institution. What we have seen in the previous slides is uh, NRF is a government initiative. DAC is a government initiative. Private sector, manufacturing sector, they formed a council. This is called Quality Council of India, which was started in 1996. This is a partly jointly by government of India and Indian industry. This is for improvement of quality in the industry as well as the service industry and manufacturing industry. The aim of this QCFI is to accredit accreditation structure in country, spread the quality movement in India. Uh, they have a campaign called National Quality Campaign. Uh, education institutions can also apply for accreditation under National Quality Council of India. What is the mission of this QCFI? to lead the nationwide quality movement in India by involving all stakeholders for our emphasis on adherence to quality standards in all spheres of activity, uh, promoting, primarily promoting and protecting interest of the nation. Means it includes manufacturing industry, service industry, uh, to promote the quality in day-to-day -day life. In the QCFI, there are several bodies are there, national accreditation bodies for certification bodies, NAPCB. 
which undertakes uh, certify the uh, bodies, inspection bodies, uh, maybe EMS, environmental management system, ENMS, energy management system, FSMS, food safety management system, ISMS, information security management system. Like this, there are many management systems are there. Uh, respective industry can submit itself for getting the certification under national accreditation bodies for certification. We have NABET, uh, National Accreditation Board for Education and Training. Uh, this is for, in our education sector. NABET is offering accreditation program for quality school governance in the country with a view to provide framework for the effective management delivery of holistic education program created overall development of students. So we can submit for certification under NABET. Uh, we have a, a structure called FEED, Formal Education Excellence Division, Accreditation of Schools, Awareness Workshop, and School Assessment. Uh, uh, schools can submit themselves for accreditation from the Quality Council of India, or you, they may invite the experts from the QCFI to conduct awareness workshops uh, for the improvement of quality. We have NABL, National Accreditation Board for Testing and Calibration Laboratories. Uh, this is applicable to science laboratories in India, uh, calibration laboratories, proficiency testing. Uh, this, this is uh, uh, done by the QCFI. And National Board for Quality Promotion, NBQP, Board of Quality Council of India works on the vision of promoting quality of life for the citizen of India. And uh, this is the mission of this uh, NBQP. Uh, this is, uh, we have discussed three things. One is the NRF ranking. Second one is NAC accreditation. The third one is Quality Council of India. Quality Council of India is a private and public partnership. Uh, earlier two are government initiatives. Uh, these uh, three agencies are, uh, first two are ranking, second one is certification. And we go to ISO. This is an international body, international organization for standardization. It is an independent non-governmental organization with a membership of 165 standard bodies. India is also a member. The headquarters is located in Switzerland, Genoa. Uh, what this uh, body will do, they will develop the standards. This is a voluntary standards, market uh, relevant and consensus based uh, standards, both for manufacturing sector and also for service sector. The three uh, principles of ISO standard development are respond to a need in the market. What is the need in the market? Global expert opinion they collect, stakeholder responses they collect, and they come to conclusion, consensus, and they develop a standard. This is standard. There are two standards. BA standards are there, Bureau of Indian Standards. They, they certify the products, but ISO certifies the quality management system prevailing in an in a industry or an education institution. We have a very popular standard called IS1-8000, world's best known quality management standards for organizations for any size, uh, maybe small scale, large scale, private, public, manufacturing, or service. It may be also education. Uh, this is a IS1-8000 standard is applicable to quality management system. IS4-21001 is a management system standard for educational operations. There are many standards are there in IS1-8000. Uh, this standard is applicable to educational institutions. Any educational institution, a college or a university, they can submit for certification from ISO. Uh, they make a comprehensive set of successful practices available for all educational institutions, and they audit and they give the certification based on the audit result. Uh, management system. Uh, this management system is, uh, what is the argument is that uh, to bring quality in higher education, there must be a management system. System drives the uh, quality. Quality is driven by the system. Therefore, uh, what they do, uh, this IS1-8000, uh, they take the stakeholders, take the processes inside the college and university, how they conform it to the processes or curriculums, and they come out with how they are meeting the educational objectives. Uh, this is about IS-1-8001-2018 specifies the requirements for management system of uh, higher education institutions. This is the latest standard which is available for teaching, learning and research in higher education institutions. The aim is to improve the quality of uh, uh, teaching, learning and also uh, research. Uh, 
Uh, you come across some of the colleges, uh, they say that they are certified by IS1000. Uh, these are the major principles, focus on learners and other beneficiaries, visionary leadership, engagement of people, process approach, improvement, quality improvement, evidence-based decisions, relationship management, social responsibility, accessibility, equity, and ethical conduct. Some of the principles on which they assess the quality management system in higher education institution. We come to the uh, World University Rankings 2023. We have seen the rankings in India. We have seen the IS-1000 certification. We have seen NAC certification. Suppose if you ask a question, which is the best university in the world? There are so many agencies are conducting World University Rankings. Among them is the first one is the DA. DA means the Time Higher Education World Ranking, DA. Uh, 2023 is the latest ranking by or times higher education. This again, this is a voluntary, this is not compulsory. Universities can submit themselves for ranking to the times higher education. In 2023, we have seen 1,799 universities across 104 countries and regions, they submitted themselves for ranking purpose. Uh, these uh, universities of from different countries, largest developed countries, underdeveloped countries, and even from small countries also. Uh, 13 performance indicators that measure an institution performance across teaching, research, knowledge transfer, international outlook. Uh, these are the parameters they use for ranking the world universities. Uh, these are the top five universities in the world as per the Times Higher Education. Number one, uh, first university is the uh, <coughs> University of Oxford. Here in the University of Oxford, Number of students are 20,965. Student-teacher ratio is 10.6. We have seen in India, it is 24. Teacher-student ratio. Look into the uh, teacher-student ratio, 10.6. Foreign students, 42%. Domestic students, they vary 58%. Female to male ratio is 48 is to 52. This is the top one university. The last year also, it was the first university to rank, followed by Harvard University. Last year, Stanford was the second rank. Now, Harvard University is the second rank. Number of students, 21,887. Uh, student teacher ratio is uh, less than Oxford, 9.6. Foreign students are less than Oxford, 25%. Uh, female and male is equal, 50 50. University of Cambridge, which is there in UK, and Stanford University, which is there in USA, they rank equal rank, tied rank, three, third rank, third rank. Student strength is given, 20,000 and 16,000. Teacher student ratio 11.7.1. You see, the Stanford University has got less, uh, less uh, teacher student ratio 7.1. Foreign students are less, 24%. MIT USA is the fifth rank with 11,000 students. When you see, top five universities are there in the USA and UK. You find three universities in USA and two in UK. When you look into the 100 universities or 500 universities, uh, the ranking of Indian universities is, is at the lower level. So only IASCs will find is somewhere. And you take the top five universities. First one is the University of Oxford, one of the most prestigious universities in the world. This is the top university's fifth year running. Means for the last five years, this secured the first rank in the world university ranking. This is the oldest university and also the best known universities in the world, University of Oxford. Uh, this is the oldest in English speaking course. It was established in 1096. You see how many years are over. Uh, uh, we, we are proud to say that we had uh, uh, Nalanda University, Takshila University, but now these universities are not functioning. But 1096 means now we are in 2023. 1,000 years, almost 1,000 years existence, longer the existence. We start universities and we close it. Well, some of the universities are uh, sick, they cannot function. But this university has been functioning from 1096. Located in and around Oxford, medieval city center, university comprises of 44 colleges and halls, over 100 libraries in that university, making it the largest library system in UK. Suppose we find one uh, library in a college, one library in a university, but Oxford University has got 100 libraries, uh, largest library system in the UK. 
Students number around 22,000 in the total, just over half of whom are undergraduates, while over 40% are international, representing 140 countries. Means most of the students are coming from different countries to study in Oxford, and 50% are undergraduate, remaining 50% are studying postgraduate and research. They are focusing on research. Oxford has an alumni network of over 250,000 individuals, including more than 120 Olympic medalists, 26 Nobel Prize winners, seven poet laureates, over 30 modern world leaders. Some of the world leaders are Bill Clinton studied in uh, Oxford, Aung San Suu Kyi, Myanmar, Indira Gandhi studied in Oxford. Like this, leading uh, political personalities have studied. 26 UK Prime Ministers have studied in Oxford. These are the profile of Oxford University. Oxford University is associated with 11 winners of Nobel Prize in Chemistry, 5 in Physics, 16 in Medicine. Notable Oxford thinkers and scientists include Tim Berners-Lee, Stephen Hawking. You know that how Hawking uh, uh, is a thinker, great thinker. These are the philosophers. Uh, this is uh, a profile of Oxford University, uh, which is one of the best universities in the world. Uh, students are ready to go there, but getting admission is very tough and getting a job in Oxford University is very tough because uh, the highest standard we, we discussed in the morning, excellence. Quality means excellence. What is excellence means? Education quality in Oxford University is excellent. Nowhere it is comparable. That is excellence. Second university is Harvard University. Uh, this is uh, dating back to 1636. Harvard University is the oldest university in USA. Uh, you see, 1636 is the means, uh, USA history. If you see USA history uh, compared to UK, it got the limited uh, history. 1636 almost all it has completed uh, uh, nearly 400 years of its existence. Harvard University. It is the most prestigious university in the world. Oldest university in USA. Uh, this has been named after John Harvard, who left his library and half of his estate to the institution when he died in 1638. Uh, this is the founder of this university, uh, who has given money to the university to run. Harder, Harvard University has connections to more than 45 Nobel laureates, over 30 heads of state, 48 uh, Pulitzer Prize winners. So this prize is given by USA for achievements in the uh, Journalism, music, etc. in USA. Uh, fellowship is also awarded by Harvard University to the students. Uh, it has got a network of alumni, living alumni, 323,000 living alumni, including 271,000 in the USA, nearly 52,000 in 201 other countries. Harvard University alumni. 13 US presidents have honorary doctorates from the institution. I want to mention here. Our universities, university, Indian universities are giving honor doctor a very convocation, two, three, four, five, like this. But uh, you see the life of the uh, our 400 years of existence, they are given 13 uh, presidents honor doctorates. Uh, latest honor doctorate was given to John F. Kennedy in 1956. It is very difficult to get the honor doctorate in uh, Harvard University. But in India, we are giving away the honor doctorates. Okay. Uh, it is also home to the largest academic library in the world with 20.4 billion volumes, 180,000 serial titles, an estimated 400 billion manuscripts items, 10 billion photographs, 124 billion archived web pages, 5.4 terabytes modern digital archives and manuscripts. See the resources. I want to mention here, recently I met one professor, retired professor from Canada in the University of Mysore. Uh, he is working for Harvard University. Narayan Murthy has given a grant to the Harvard University to translate the Kannada books to English. Some best Kannada classical books are there. Uh, they must be translated to English. This work is taken by the Harvard University. Uh, one Kannada professor, Hanur Krishnamurthy, who retired from the University of Mysore, he is an expert appointed by the Harvard University to translate some of the best Kannada books, classical books, to English, funded by Narad Murthy, his uh, Infosys Foundation. You see the treasure. Treasure means uh, if you go there, you get anything and everything. This is the library uh, resources which is available in the Harvard University. There are more than 400 students, organizations on campus. Uh, this is a very diverse organization for each and everything. You see the voice of the students. 
uh, in our campus we have received only few different uh, diverse interest they have the organizations Harvard University Medical School is connected to 10 hospitals university receives one of the largest financial endowments of any higher education institution in the world fund is not a crunch for the Harvard University they got a good resources financial resources they invest in uh, different government bonds and securities not only in US and also in different uh, countries uh, money is not a problem it has created 1.1 billion dollars in the fiscal year ended june 13 more than a third of the harvard's total operating revenue in that year means uh, this is the surplus they generate 1.5 billion dollars and they keep it as a corpus uh, they are not they are not seeking for fund from the government the fund with the with, with their disposal they would uh, run the show and the third uh, university is stanford university uh, stanford is one of the largest campus in the usa is one of the most prestigious university in the world. It was established in 1885. Since compared to Harvard University, this is uh, the recent one. It has opened six years later as a co-educational non-denominational private institution in the country. Its location, less than an hour from the San Francisco in USA, it is the heart of the California Silicon Valley. You know, Silicon Valley, Bangalore is called the Silicon Valley. It is uh, meant for promoting entrepreneurs. Stanford University is known for entrepreneurial spirit. Means young graduates, they become entrepreneurs. This entrepreneurialism has its roots in the aftermath of the Second World War, when the provost encouraged innovation, resulting in a self-sufficient industry that would become the Silicon Valley. Means Silicon Valley has got its own history where startups are encouraged by the entrepreneurs and most of the IT companies are situated in Silicon Valley. Uh, this is supported by the Harvard uh, Stanford University. The main campus has 8,180 acres and is home to almost all the undergraduates who study at the university. Uh, approximately our university has got around 800 universities in the state of Mysore. But we don't uh, find any university in India which has got this size of land. Uh, we, our land, the size is very less. 1,000 acres is, I think, 1,000, 2,000 acres. We don't find. There are 700 major university buildings housing 40 departments within the three academic schools and four professional schools alongside 18 independent laboratories, centers, and institutes. Stanford accounts for 21 Nobel laureates uh, within its community, numerous famous alumni associated with the university from the worlds of the business, politics, media. So, for example, Mark Zuckerberg, who started the Facebook. Uh, this is about the my second presentation. I want you to ask questions. This is the world ranking. You would access to the uh, information which is available in the website, uh, Ministry of Education or world ranking. So many ranking frameworks are there. As a teacher, we must know this every year because uh, where we stand, how some of these universities and colleges are the best, why they are best, where we stand, where India stands, where our universities and colleges stands. This is about the second session. Will you please ask any questions. Yes, please. Yes. So some questions I'm seeing here in the uh, uh, chart. Yes, sir, some organizations are providing PhD degree for doing nothing for some people in our country. How to stop this culture? Uh, this culture means the University Grants Commission is the nodal agency for 
ensuring the quality of PhD. It has come out with some uh, guidelines. Latest one is 2017, it has come out. And universities have been adopting UGC regulations. It is the responsibility of the guide and the student to produce a good thesis. If the guide compromises, I think quality of the PhD thesis will be compromised. It is the guide. Uh, and also the student, when you get the student, we ask them to work. Okay, that is the answer. Uh, is it worrisome that not a single university has made it to the top 200 in the uh, QS ranking firms? So definitely, I agree with you. QS ranking, I have not dealt it. This is another ranking like uh, the Delhi University is ranked 220 globally and third in USA. IIT Bombay is ranked 303 and IIT Madras is ranked 334. Definitely, uh, our uh, IITs and IIM should uh, come up in par with the uh, world universities. And uh, Sureka has uh, said, uh, oh, this is some other point. Uh, any other questions? I think I answered some of the questions you raised. Thank you, Mute Talk to Aitmar Talwa. Why so? Hello, you're a mute. I don't know about your question. Discussion started. Okay. I thought you might have done that. 